most of us take for granted that we can instantly recognize people we know by looking at their faces. It's so automatic. It almost sounds silly to even say it. Friends can put on a hat, cut their hair, and still we know them by their face. And we can do this for thousands upon thousands of faces without ever giving it a moment's thought. But imagine for a second what life would be like if you couldn't. If your wife or husband looked like a stranger, you couldn't tell your kids apart, couldn't recognize yourself in a mirror. As we first reported in March, that's what life is like for people who suffer from a mysterious condition called face blindness or prosopagnosia. It can make it nearly impossible to recognize or identify faces. If you've never heard of face blindness, you're not alone. Chances are your doctor hasn't either. It's been unknown to most of the medical world until very recently. Hearing about it can feel a little like entering the twilight zone. But for people who are face blind, the condition is very real. The story will continue in a moment. Jacob Hodes is one of them. He's 31 years old, he has a college degree, has had great jobs, and he seems perfectly normal. Just don't ask him to identify any faces. We're gonna put up the first one. Even very famous ones. No idea. We showed Jacob faces without hair. Uh, a pure test of facial recognition. No. Nope. I can't say if I've ever seen that person. He has seen Jimmy Carter plenty of times and knows Michael Jordan, too. Oh, Lord. He just can't recognize their faces. Now, that's just impossible. I mean, who... Can you describe my face? You're staring right at it. High cheekbones, light eyes. Clearly, Jacob could see my face, but he says if we happen to run into each other in a few days, he wouldn't know me from any other woman with short blonde hair. They meet somebody, they have a good time with them, they have a nice relationship, then a week later they walk past them. Brad Duchesne is a professor at Dartmouth College who's been studying face blindness for nearly 15 years. He says the hardest thing to understand is how people can see a familiar face but not recognize it. So he created a demonstration to give me a little taste faces turned upside down. So here are some famous faces. You're going to be tempted to twist your head, but don't do it. Okay. You know, Boy, can you identify hard. any of these people? I was completely oh at a loss. You think I'd know all of these people? You've seen them all a lot. I, can, I don't know any of these people. I really don't. Do you want to see them upright? Sure. It was astonishing. With just that click, they became recognizable people before my eyes. I know John Travolta, I know Morley. And there was Denzel Washington, Jennifer Aniston, Sandra Bullock. But the one that really got me was the young woman on the lower right, my daughter. I didn't know my own daughter? Yeah. I didn't know my own daughter. So there she is. Wow. So is this, am I getting a feeling for what people with face blindness have? This is, when you look at that, there's clearly, there's a face there. Oh, there yeah. There are parts, there are eyes, there's mouth, but you just can't put it together. Wow, that's stunning. I feel terrible for them now. Yeah, it's I really do. difficult. And largely unknown. Prosopagnosia only got its name in the 1940s, when a couple of soldiers came back from World War II with head injuries and couldn't recognize their wife or parents. And it took another 50 years for science to discover that people could be born face blind, like Jacob Hodes. And Joe Livingston, a retired teacher. Ben Dabrowski, a software products designer. And Meg Novotny, a doctor. <laughs> if I were your patient, we, I, you'd spent a long time with me discussing a problem. I come back the next time. Oh, no, no, no. You walk out to the window at the front and start checking out. And I walk out of the room and I don't know who you are. Come on. 
She relies on patient charts, she told us. But there aren't any of those in Ben's office where lunch in the cafeteria can be tricky. And, uh, sitting down at lunch, having a discussion with someone about one of my projects, and the guy across the table gets up from lunch and says, God, that's really interesting. When you have that meeting, can you invite me? Thanks. See ya. Hmm. Who is it? I don't Who know. Who is it? I have no idea. Is it a memory issue? What, what is The it? memory's Not never only. created. The, the face doesn't get put. It doesn't get filed. So they have to rely on other strategies to identify people. Hair, body shape, the way people walk, their voice, even style of dress. But Jacob told us that it can all fall apart when someone changes their hair, like a colleague named Sylvia, who he couldn't find one day until she started putting her hair into her usual ponytail. And she like put it into the ponytail, and once it was in place, that was Sylvia. It clicked. Then she took her hair back out of that ponytail. And, right then and there? Yep. She just put it in and then took it out. So and she went from Sylvia, not Sylvia, Sylvia, not Sylvia? She disappeared. Come on. Yeah. To him, it was as though her face had changed into someone else's before his eyes. So now I'm confronted with the situation that, that got weird because I knew this person was Sylvia, but it didn't feel like Sylvia. Faces mean so much to us. Identity, beauty, character, a place to hang all our memories about a person. Faces have captivated artists forever, so it may surprise you to learn that the man who painted these faces, renowned portraitist Chuck Close, is also face blind, and severely so. Let's say you went out to have dinner with somebody, and then you saw her the next day. Wouldn't remember her. And yet he has spent his career, even after a collapsed spinal artery left him mostly paralyzed, painting, well, faces. Yes. Chuck Close has face blindness, and he paints faces. Right. The, the reason I think I was driven to it was to, to uh, take images of people that matter to me and commit them to memory in the best way I can, which is to slow the whole process down, break it down into lots of little memorable pieces, which is exactly how he creates these works. He can't make sense of a whole face, so he works from a photograph with a grid on it and translates what he sees square by square onto his canvas. Well, guess what we've done? I don't know. We've put together a quiz for you. We brought some of our famous faces along to show him. Uh, from the chin, I think it's um, Leno and we're surprised that he did pretty darn well. Well, from the lips, I think it's Tiger Woods. Yeah, well, you're pretty good. But of course, not perfect. I don't have a clue. That's Tom Cruise. Right now, my guts are tied in knots because this very activity is the thing that makes me most nervous. Oh, now I have to figure out who this person is because he isn't recognizing these faces the way most of us do. Every face is a puzzle he has to solve. What I'm thinking, you don't see too many people with just a mustache anymore. So that means it's probably somebody who's not alive. So if it's an African-American of a certain age with a mustache, it, it might be Martin Luther King. You're amazing. You deduce, deduce, deduce. You're like Sherlock Holmes here. Yeah, this is how I get through life. Of course, he knew we were showing him famous faces. With our group, we threw in a trick one, a photo of Joe's daughter. Does anybody know who that is? No way. No. Mm -mm. Joe, work on it, because it's somebody that Joe knows. Uh, well, it may be, but nothing's coming. It's someone in your family. Oh. But still she didn't get it. It's your daughter. Now can you see it? Is it clear now? Or? It is believable now. We were baffled that a condition so extreme it could keep people from recognizing their own children could have been almost completely unknown until very recently. World-renowned urologist and writer, Dr. Oliver Sacks. We asked Dr. Oliver Sacks, the famous chronicler of fascinating and bizarre neurological conditions, who wrote about face blindness in his latest book, The Mind's Eye. It is with our faces that we face the world. How do you explain that the medical world did not identify this problem? It is not usually a complaint of people. People do not bring it up. 
many people who are colorblind do not know of it until they take an army medical. One sort of assumes that other people are the way one is. It never, ever, ever in my life occurred to me that people would look at a face and just get it like that. I believe that I was not good with people. You but I had no idea of the reason. I just thought I was stupid. <laughs> Jo only learned there was such a thing as face blindness when she stumbled across this article and came in to be tested in Duchesne's lab. A few hours after her second visit, no. in a bizarre coincidence, she and Duchesne ended up attending the same event. I kept placing my face in a position where she could see it. I realized that one of the group was staring at me in a way that people don't normally. And so finally, at one point I said, you know, do you know who I am? Ah. And she put it all together. Duchesne had seen, seen face blindness in action. Jo had seen the misconnections of her life. If that had been anybody else, they would have been presumably furious, would not have spoken to me, and would probably never have spoken to me again. But I would never have known they were there. Yeah. It made me realize, how many times have I done this? Right. How many friends have you offended? Yeah. How many people aren't talking to you, and you don't know why? And we'll never know. Yeah. People do think you may be snubbing them or, or, or stupid or mad or inattentive. That's why it's so important to recognize what one has and to, and to admit it. Which is exactly what Sachs himself has just done, written about the fact that he too um, is face blind. I have had difficulty recognizing faces for as long as I can remember. My problem extends not only to my nearest and dearest, but also to myself. I've sometimes had the experience of apologizing to someone and realizing it's a mirror. Um, no. I have no. indeed. Because you didn't know it was you? I could see that it was a, a, a large, clumsy man with a beard. Now, I've now found a way of dealing with this. I have one special feature. I have rather large ears. <laughs> and um, if the large, clumsy man with a beard has extra large ears, it's probably me. I shouldn't be smiling. But it's funny. Oh, well, well, it is fair. I mean, these things are, are both, both comic and serious. And surprisingly common. Recent studies show as many as one in 50 people may be face blind. And the search is on for clues inside their brains. We'll show you what the research is finding, plus, would you believe, super recognizers. I would say Mike Wallace. That is Mike Wallace. <laughs> who never forget a face. I don't even know how to get rid of people. <laughs> when we come back. 